Hello and welcome back to another uh, football manager kind of save idea that I've had previously that I wanted to explore. Uh, first things to note, the Aston Villa career will be continuing into season three. I know it's now been a few days since it's been uploaded, but I think I uploaded an awful lot of content nightly. So I kind of wanted to give a kind of few days to digest that. Uh, I will be uploading it again, but I can't see myself returning to nightly uploads. Uh, this is just something in between, kind of break it up a little bit, something a bit more less rigorous than you know playing every game through the save. Uh, this is not really a challenge; it's kind of a, just an idea I wanted to explore. Uh, I've taken over initially Barnsley, who are one of the satellite clubs. Although I think it's Paul Conway is involved in it. There is other there is other people. I think even Billy Bean's involved somewhere. But they basically own a series of clubs. Similar to how City do. But on a lower, smaller scale. As their clubs are much less successful. So the concept is really. I'm giving myself five seasons. I do not play any of the games. I literally just make transfers. Based on... Um, the spreadsheet and the data I get from the spreadsheet that I use to do my recruitment on this game that I've touched upon before and I use the same tactic for every single side and the aim is just really to do as well as I possibly can inside five years so uh, initially what I'll do is I'll show you a brand new save with Barnsley so you can kind of get an idea of what they are like at the start and then we will just go through season by season my recruitment and kind of assess uh, where I ended up basically after the five years for my little sim test. So initially, obviously, Barnsley predicted to be 15th in the championship. Um, after last season, obviously, in real life, they got playoffs. It's been a very successful season for them. Uh, they're expected to avoid a relegation battle, which is quite, should be easy, really. Uh, we don't need any of that. But yeah, this is the initial team. Uh, just to show you, this is the formation that I will be using. Ignore the naming. Again, not my formation. Again, never going to claim it is my formation. But this is just, for example, our Barnsley start first season. So as you can see, we're struggling for complete forwards in the championship, which doesn't really surprise me. But that's kind of looking at the squad that I'd start with. Uh, first season, I didn't do any recruitment, so there is that. This is obviously how things start. Uh, they've won one FA Cup. Does it tell me when? 1982, did that say? 1912, sorry, I'm blind. 1912, they won an FA Cup. Won the Papa John's in 2016. I was actually at that game, funnily enough. Uh, I mentioned now, obviously I'm wearing a Coventry shirt here. Uh, I don't own a Barnsley shirt, or I would have been wearing a Barnsley shirt, as that's what I try and match up shirts to say as were possible. But obviously, it's Coventry for red, random, I suppose, really. Yeah, I was actually at that Papa John's game, funnily enough. Uh, English third North, they won way back when. So yeah, not a large amount of success. Uh, info, finances are okay. Uh, you know, bag balance is there, the value is there. And yeah, so this this is the facilities. How it starts. Uh, these are the other clubs that are owned in the kind of franchise. So I'll be obviously moving on to them next for the next step. But this episode will solely focus on Barnsley and go through the seasons. But yeah, uh, so let's dive in to... The simulated through which I think five seasons we've gone through um, we're definitely I think it's 2026 in the summer of uh, but we will uh, we'll go all the way back start to the beginning so as you can see uh, interestingly it won't let me go back to the first season I didn't realize it only kept five seasons on uh, but these are the deals that I made in my first season, uh, which can we go on? Which I, I'll talk you through because I think it would spoil it if I went on a club info screen already. So this is the first season. I'll tell you the first season in the championship on the simulation. We got second, so we're straight into the Premier League, which is fantastic. I got a budget of about forty million. No, I didn't. I tell a lie. 
got a budget of about 25 million to work with, a bit more than, so I kind of utilised all that. Picked up uh, Dion Drainer Briejo, who was a very successful signing for me, as you can tell. He's since been moved on, but at the time he was an incredible signing for me. I picked him up for 1.8 million, and he was largely mixed. Uh, he had one good season, followed by an inconsistent season, followed by a good season, followed by an inconsistent season. But as you can tell, we've made very good money on him, sending him to Azerbaijan. Picked him up for 1.8 million after four years at the club, we've sold him for 13. Absolutely no complaints about that deal. I think he was a steal found by the spreadsheet. Uh, really happy I, I signed him when I did. Uh, Sam Byram, like we're the same. He's, he's now a fitness coach of all things after retiring, after leaving Barnsley. I picked him up for a couple of years as kind of just um, to tide me over. I knew, I knew for the money he was good. I knew he was towards the end of his career. It's not kind of the sign I usually like to make, but needs must. So we had Sam Byron for a few years. Uh, Lucas Fabianski in similar ilk. Again, he's now retired as a keeping coach, but I picked him up for a couple of years as a solid understudy. First season, he didn't get a sniff. As you can see, second season, he played half the season. So for that, he well justified that money for me. Experience. This was my main keeper that I picked up. Again, as you can see, he's been moved on since, but I was happy with him as my number one immediately stepping into the Premier League I think he did. A, he conceded an awful lot of goals but if you look at the average rating he wasn't exactly playing that badly uh, again after last season he was certainly number two so I decided to move him on for more, same, more or less the same money I'd paid for him so no real complaints again there, there was no loss on the deal for me uh, Omar Richards is a fantastic piece of business for me as you can see another one that's since moved on Picked him up for 475 and then Tottenham activated his release clause, so I didn't really have a choice in that. But still, it's a massive turnover in profit for me, and he's since been appalling for Spurs in the four games we've let him play. So, it certainly looked like good business my end as a left back for a couple of seasons in the Premier League. Jake Cooper was another one, he's now seen since moved on that age again he was coming towards the peak of his career i picked him up for 4.2 million he was solid if but nothing else in that first season in the premier league which is what i wanted from him his performances then dropped off so i've sold him for more than double i paid so again really happy with the business though can't fault any element of the deal george rodriguez was somebody i've since moved on he was a little bit younger but i think he gave me his best years uh, he had a couple of seasons where his, his ratings were quite poor, but he certainly did a job for me. That one I did take a financial hit on, but 3.5 million loss on the player, it's it's negatable. It's certainly something that I didn't mind at the time. And I was, I felt he came in and he did, not, and he did an okay job. Let's, let's not call this a win, this is probably more of a loss, but... Certainly, that was that was the thinking behind his signing. Cameron Devlin, largely the same. Now he looked on paper to be a tremendous bit of business when I paid 4.7 for him. Never really, after that first season again performed fairly admirably in the Premier League, but the league quickly passed him on. Uh, he just wasn't performing, wasn't getting game time, so I decided to take a small loss on Cameron Devlin and sent him to West Brom where he's performing admirably if nothing else. Again, I thought that was a reasonable bit of business. Uh, Rian also had an absolute belt-in first season for me. Best player for arguably that year. Picked him up for six mil, sold him back to, well, to Mexico for a, a small loss after a few years. But again, he gave me his best season to date. And I was really happy with that from him. And I thought it was a good bit of business at the time. Certainly helped me survive that first year, which, spoiler, I'll tell you, we did stay up the first season, largely in part thanks to his creativity. No issues there again for me. Brenner was a fantastic start. As you can see, he's moved on to ma massively better things than Barnsley, with the utmost respect to the Barnsley fans. Picked him up for 7.5 and gave me two tremendous seasons. He was on fire that season until, unfortunately, Pastry activated his buy clause. Again, I had no, I, I couldn't stand in his way. There's nothing I could do with that. I think it was a bit of a coup to get him to begin with. So I was 
had no issue with letting him go and obviously he's helped the balance sheet though he was a, he was probably one of my best signings i've made on this save so yeah that was brenner his goals again largely kept us up as you can see though obviously we've stayed in the premier league again um rocker was another one picked him up for very cheap sold him on for a very nice profit was very very consistent over the three years for me he got better each year was really happy with that purchase for two million i think he was a steal again very smart recruitment i've made 12 million on a player that's just turned 30. again no complaints uh another one for me that didn't really work out but i've, I've took a bit of profit on uh first season he was okay second season he dropped off a bit so i let him go to last palm that's where he had a good season and then reaped the rewards of that was pills and paid me uh, seven million for him again came from Benfica B so I was fairly happy with the way he'd integrated into the team and I'd picked up 5.5 mil profit off him sorry 4.0 mil profit off him and that's basically the business I did first season in terms of outs uh, these all went Collins was more of a he wasn't going to play let's take 5.5 million for him now uh, the loan fees are obviously just I loaned out a lot of my championship players just because I was unsure if I'd stay up at this stage and Isaac Christie Davis is nowhere near good enough as you can see he's now playing in TNS after struggling for game time at Shrewsbury so his career is very much petered out and that was the first season's business so on to the second season oh just one thing to note this lad has gone on to be quite a little legend for me my first region crop uh, he's now playing first team football Again, probably one of the better regions I've had on this game. And it's, it's always nice to actually bring a region through and actually see the development. So that's why I wanted to give him a shout out while he was there. As you can see, he's now worth a pretty penny. But I've got him down to a five-year deal. Because he's one of the cornerstones of uh, our team. But yeah, moving on. Uh, second season, I picked up Hamza Chowdhury on a loan. Still there to this day because I did actually activate the buy clause on that. I felt that was good business for a homegrown English player. 3.8 million. I was very happy to take up. I mean, he's been average, if nothing else. But he certainly uh, has served a purpose in the squad. Rico Henry, I think, was a very good deal for the player I've got. That's just ridiculous from Sheffield United. For selling him by uh, Brentford, selling him for 14. So they've had Sheffield United's pants down. And I've just come and picked him up for 4.2 the following season. Insane business for me. He's been incredibly good and consistent. Really happy with the purchase. Uh, from Rico Henry, we've got Gabriel Sara. Again, I'm now. I think he's now had his day. Uh, he's really struggled for minutes. Unfortunately, uh, he came with quite a good reputation, but he's just not. He's not really managed to fit into the side. So, I likely be making a loss on this five million. But you can't win them all. Uh, Marcelo Nunez was another fantastic bit business in my opinion. Uh, first season was his best. 4.5 million for Chilean international. I believe he plays for Chile. He certainly should do. There is a way of checking, but there we are. 31 caps, two goals. So I was happy with that one. Byron Castillo, very very cheap for an Ecuadorian international. Uh, played right back for a bit, and then he's now my backup right back. Served me well for 700 grand. There is just no complaints in that deal whatsoever. Uh, really happy with that. Uh, Jen Staggs is another one that since moved on that didn't really kind of make the cut. Took a bit of a loss on him. Uh, he had a good season for Brentford in the championship. So congrats to him. It's a kind of Brentford kind of buy, isn't it, really, on paper. Just didn't really make the cut in the Premier League for me. So just cut my losses with that one. Uh, Pep Biel is another one. He's still there, but he's another one that's on the way out. Uh, I believe that deal is agreed. I'm going to kind of check if I can. So he's joining Tigres for 14.75 million. So I've doubled my money on a player that served me admirably, and I'm really happy to take that because I don't see a long term future for him. Uh, this was this was another one that was a bit of a gamble. I took uh, two million, loaned him out for a couple of years. Didn't really progress as I'd like, so I just sold him to Austria again for a small profit. Uh, just 
I was just seeing the. In my opinion, the way he was going, he wouldn't have shaped to be a first team player. So I took out. I got the gamble. I got out of the gamble though when I could. Uh, second season, couple of sales. Carlton Morris was never going to be good enough for me at that level. He's since gone on to be very admirable for Luton, who found him back in League One. Only a minor loss on the actual real transfer of Morris of so I didn't pay. I didn't buy him. Uh, Devante Cole went. I think he was a free transfer. Yeah, so first season he was a major part of our promotion in the Premier League. He just didn't get a sniff because I just signed better players. So I let him go to Hearts, where he's he's done he's done all right, I suppose. Aitchinson uh, was just somebody that was going to get released, so I just took the money. Uh, he's gone to Derby, done re- reasonably nothing. So then he's gone back up to Scotland. Uh, Patrick Schmidt, these are all loan deals, so they're not really important. Third season, as you can see, activated the Chowdhury. This was my biggest season, but you've got to factor in that a lot of this was because I had I had 95 million to spend this summer because I didn't spend any of the Brenner money. So I had a, I had a big, big pot of money this summer. So I brought in Ryan Gold for 6.5. Since sold him to Scotland for a small profit because he wasn't, he wasn't playing to the standard I wanted him to. He did all right that first season. But I, I, he, was get, he was approaching 30 and I just thought, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting out of him what I wanted. Pablo Rodriguez was a gamble that I took. Uh, again, didn't have a work permit. Failed to get one. Just took the money. Took a bit of a profit on him. Took a gamble. It didn't work. We've all been uh, happy to get out of that deal with a profit on the balance sheet. Uh, this was a very good deal in my opinion. Joachim Anderson. Or Joachim Anderson. For 9.5. Only two seasons after they paid 16 for him. So... I thought that were a good deal. Really happy to take it. He's been a solid player for me. Uh, Tomiscus, and again, a bit of a strange one. Villa signed him, had a very poor season. I, I saw the potential in him, picked him up, and he's been one of my better players. So that's certainly kind of Moneyball esque, where you've identified a talent that you know can perform better and have picked him up at a lower than expected market fee. So I was happy with that. Mess just kind of replaced, um, not Rico Henry, replaced Omar Richards as well. This is his replacement. New goalkeeper Alvaro Fernandez, who people may remember, spent the season alone at Brentford in real life. Didn't really, they never signed him. I signed him off the back of his best season because they were in the second division at Horesca. And he's since gone on to be nothing but an, an able keeper for me to the point that. I, he, he Inter Milan came in for him for 60 million in the summer. I accepted it, but he chose to reject him, which is a shame because I'd love to have made 50 million pound profit on him. But he remains number one. Uh, Shinita Apple Camp is a man that I had had my eyes on for a long time. I wanted him 12 months prior, but he had uh, agreed a new deal because he had a release clause of about 10 million, which I thought was very good value. Eventually, I got my season later for 17.5, and again, he's been one of my better players. Uh, what's his value? He's now worth 80 million, if you believe that kind of thing. I'm very happy with that bit of business I did. Um, Leandro Fernandez, another one that I felt was very good value. Uh, 7.25, tremendous first season, very admirable second season. I think he's a very good signing for that kind of money picked up from Mexico, it was a reasonable fee, I'd pick him up, as you'll find, the further you go through the same, the more money you have to spend for these kind of players, that's just the way it naturally goes, uh, Thiago Morales, Morales, I picked up uh, initially, sent him back to Boa Vista, he didn't play as much as I wanted him to, so I sent him to Basel for a season, did okay, he's now back in the first team fold, uh, and that's it for that business that summer, uh, in terms of outs, this chap was sent on his way. Never did anything for me. Picked up in real life. I never played him, which is probably unfair. But um, Jordan Williams again was already here. Bristol City obviously took a huge loss on him, so I I, I did well getting out of that deal. What I did. Uh, Patrick Schmidt went to Reed. Justin Moon to Wigan. Uh, these are all loans, and then yeah, that Brenner deal. 
and the Omar Richards deal, which obviously the money wasn't spent from, hence why that's kind of inflated. Um, I think I'd worked it out that I had a net spend of roughly about 100 million, and I took Barnsley from the championship to where you'll soon see. Yeah, into the next season, again, picked up Ayer for roughly what Barnsley paid. At uh, Barnsley. For Brentford paid. Again, Appy was signing, he's been fairly solid. If I can get out of that with minimal loss, I, I would take it. James Garner on a free, very much squad player for me, but on a free transfer effort. It was good business. Stand by that. Anthony Marshall again. Could not believe the wage I'd got him on. 42 grand, obviously. I've since sold him uh, for 9.5 million. So that's a slice of profit I took off him. And he was uh, very solid for me for a couple of seasons. Dadly played last year, but that first season he's got some key goals. So, really happy with that again. This lad uh, seems to be a monster in almost every save because he's got all the capabilities to dominate. I was very happy to pay 17.5 million and get a, a work permit. And since Bayern and Madrid keep coming knocking, and the minute that they pay the money I want, he's, he's off. But again, good signing for me. Uh, Praxedes. From Red Bull Bratango. Brancatanio. Anyway. Very good midfielder in my opinion. Uh, again. Happy to secure him. And then we've got. Pietro Pellegrini. Been around the block quite a bit. Was quite the wonder kid back in the day. As you can see. Monaco paid 22 million for him. I picked him up for 6. And he had a belting season for me. Crazy if you think. Obviously as you can see there. If you've got. If you've got a smart eye, we had continental football this year. We'll show you all about that. But he ended up with 26 in 40. Smashing record. Was a very good player for me. And then this lad was someone that I'd had my eye on for a, a little bit. I thought I think he's going to be a monster. Janice and East. I'm paying him a very hefty wage. But first season he was decent for me. Uh, again, I think that's a good price for a player that I could certainly have a nice, healthy sale on from. Callum Styles went for 5.75. He went to Claremont. Collywood or went to Wimbledon. Clark Odor went to Blackburn. Jan Stagg, as you've seen. These, these you've all seen. Got me a little bit more money. And then here we are onto this season. So this is the business that I've done. Again, spent 100, 100 million, raised about 55. Cooper went, Aranjo went, Akinia went, Rocker went, Rodriguez went. He went, and obviously there's two more to go out the door yet. Uh, we'll start at the bottom this time. Esposito, 5.5 million, I think it's a steal for a player of his quality. Don't understand why. If he scored 8, 22 and 45, he's available for that kind of money. But I'm there to take bargains like that. Uh, Kamara, again, I think he's a solid midfielder for that kind of price I've paid. I think he's going to be a good addition. Uh, Morato, slightly expensive. I think he's solid. He's, as you'll notice, now I've progressed to the point that I'm kind of comfortably a Premier League team. I've been able to kind of target the carry younger players rather than the immediate talents needed now. Kind of a change in recruitment policy. Uh, and guess I'm got the stats to be a good backup midfielder I was happy to pay 6 million for it because I'd sold quite a few Peglo uh, again someone that I think is going to be very good for me up front another gamble from Brazil after a couple of good years though see how he goes and this absolute monster Jan Paul Van Heck from Brighton who I realised just had a season at Blackburn if he turns out half as good as this game makes him and he's going to be a very good player. Because for me, uh, he's he would be my starting centre-back for years to come. He's an absolute beast. For playing, the, look, as you can see, for playing the centre-back roles. In almost everything he needs, he's very highly rated. He's a bit one-footed, but you, know, you're not, you can't pick his dream player at this sometimes in this game. So yeah, I paid 39 release clause for him. My biggest ever signing. I think it was well worth it. This is just the natural progression of the game. The more money you earn, the more money you're allowed to spend, and it just cycles up from there. But yeah, that's all the business that I did over the five years. Um, and let's see where that got us. So, straight away, as you can see, the league history. 
so I started here so second in the championship and then 13th in the Premier League 15th in the Premier League third in the Premier League Champions League football and what did we go and do went and won the Champions League went and won another FA Cup so at the time I'd been here we've won promotion an FA Cup and the Champions League over the five years finances are now rich reputation is now four and a half worldwide creating a new facility has been improved uh, finance the bank balance is now what 63 million higher than it was before the valuation is now 1.399 billion um, yeah so massive 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 improvement uh, rumours of potential board take over at the minute which would be interesting as well but we kind of come to the end of what I was doing with this save uh, facilities they are building a new stadium because I thought they're not all fitting into work well that's the kind of improvements we've had since uh, so yeah uh, what I will quickly do this is how I finished last season. I won the Champions League. So that's why I've got Champions League football again. But we only finished 8th. But again, I am not bothered in the slightest. Because we won the Champions League. So can we do this year by year? Do I have to go on stages? That's it. So this is last season. That was the season before. As you can see. Very, very good season for us. Season before that. Again, a bit of a lull season, comfortably safe, not a lot better. More of a progress building season. This was an improvement on the previous season. Uh, again, safe, not as comfortable, but safe. This was the season I wasn't in the league. Obviously, I was in the championship this season. So um, Let's have a look at that. Yeah, so this is the first season. Only lost the title on final day, really. So, again, insane to think as well. Sheffield United ended up playoffs, but they ended up winning the playoffs despite finishing the same points. So, just had a better goal difference. So, quite the interest, intriguing title race that was. But, yeah, straight up we were. Uh, this is obviously the team now compared to what we started with. The sole survivor, Jack Walton. After spending a season in Germany, never played. Season at Bolton. He's still, he will be leaving though, he wants to leave, which is a shame, but he was the sole survivor from that original championship squad. Uh, Bad Heck, Singh, Marato, Chaldry, again. James Garn, Alex Aikens, the region. Gabriel Sara, Praxedes, Nunez, Fernandez, Afrikan, Bad, Campbell, Martial, who's leaving. Peglo, Esposito, Aniste, Pellegrini. And uh, this, these are European champions. In Barnsley, which I found quite incredible, really. Now, I'm not trying to sit here and say, you know, I'm fantastic at this game, this is all down to me. But it was very fascinating that all I literally took was a tactic somebody else had made. I'm, I'm not, I'm going to be honest, we're not sure who made that. I am not claiming credit for creating that tactic, that's fundamentally clear. It's just some tactic that we've had, we've kind of played around with, and that's the outcome we've had. Uh, and I've literally just done all my recruitment off one particular spreadsheet, which how I've mentioned before that um, a very, very kind guy called Sean off the FM forums had kind of developed the concept. We kind of took it on and developed it more and kind of made it suit into more of our needs. And it just, I just used that solely for recruitment. And basically it's, it's like Moneyball with a twist because it identifies undervalued players, allows you to see undervalued players, but the twist of it is that necessary. it's not always just, it's about how well a player will play in that position based on his attributes rather than how well he would play in your squad, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, but th this is how it's gone with Barnsley, and I couldn't be happier. I mean, we've won the Champions League in five seasons, which I'm still absolutely thrilled about. And I think it's a really good start to this kind of series that I'm looking to bring to you, where I will kind of keep trying. With the next team it'll be, I think I've still got all my affiliates. Uh, I'll tell you now, we'll probably 
be. I think I'll try in Belgium with Ostend, and we'll see how we get on. Uh, I believe they're in the Pro League still. Well, bloody hell, got runner up last year. So something's going right there as well. That'll be the next one that I do in this series. But yeah, I just wanted to show you how. Obviously, the advantages of being in the Premier League is that brings a lot of money. So getting into the Premier League allows you to make these signings, which will significantly improve your squad. But yeah, it's just a fun little uh, concept I've kind of come up with that I just wanted to see how the satellite clubs could do based on my recruitment and based on the same tactic. With pure simulation, I haven't played any game. Every game's been simulated. I'll go on holiday for, and that's the outcome. So, yeah, thanks for joining me for this video. I hope this has been something you've enjoyed. Uh, obviously, let me know if it has, and we can look to do more in the future. If not, then if you're just looking for the Villa fans, it's still a save. If you're a Villa fan, then that's coming soon, I assure you. Regardless, thanks for joining me. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.